Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and today's episode is number 498. I don't have any birthdays to go over today, and I I don't have any news either, but there's one little bit of uh, information I want to go over here. Kind of a... uh, Kind of a a pro tip about not reading everything you find on the internet. So I was going through the list of recipients that I normally do uh, to pick out today's recipient and, you know, start my my homework and what needs to be done to write the story. And I came across a name uh, that was next up in my chronological order that I like to do. And that name was of a Charles R. Howland. It said that... Member of the Army, received, he was an aide-de-camp uh, under a general or a colonel at the time. Uh, oh, I'm going to botch the name here. I believe it was Wheaton, Major General Lloyd Wheaton. And, um, but there was no information. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me search around. Sometimes this has happened in the past that, you know, somebody enlisted under a different name or their name got changed or something. So I did my usual uh, cross, cross references couldn't couldn't find any name. I'm like, okay, this is not totally uncommon. So let me do a broader search. I found a Charles R. Howland, but not a Medal of Honor recipient. And I, I'm like, okay, all these photos don't appear to to be Medal of Honor recipient at all. I don't see the the medal or the ribbon anywhere. Kept digging, kept digging. Found his gravestone, no marking on it, which I've seen before. Um, kept digging, kept digging, and I finally, after, after a lot, I mean, I invested quite a bit of time into this, um, I, I found, uh, a book, luckily with online text, uh, that I was able to read the book online, and found where it says here that, and actually, I'll quote this, this, um, so I'll read this from the book, the, uh, what's the book? Uh, the, the book is called A Brief Genealogical and Biographical Record of Charles, Roscoe, Holland, Brothers, and Forebears. And in it, I did a search and I was able to find this, um, this right here. So, quote, on request in 1912, the War Department transmitted to the Treasury Department the papers forwarded May 1, 1902 by Major General Lloyd Wheaton in reference to saving life November 14, 1899 at San Fabian P.I., which is Philippine Islands, March 28, the Treasury Department in a letter to Captain Charles R. Howland stated that there is transmitted here herewith a gold medal of honor awarded to you by this department under acts of Congress approved June 20, 1874 and May 4, 1882. Now, I'm going to skip over some bits here. The next paragraph says the War Department in General Orders number 25, August 30, 1924, published the following Award of Life-Saving Medal. And further in, it says a gold life-saving medal, which then sent me down another rabbit hole of finding out, okay, what is this gold life-saving medal and why was it called a gold medal of honor? So I did some research here and I found an old photo. Uh, At the time, it was just called the gold life-saving medal. And here's a little blurb about it over at usamm.com. The gold life-saving medal, GLM, is an award of the United States Coast Guard that is approved for armed forces, personnel, and civilians. First created by an act of Congress in 1874, it is one of the oldest medals of the United States, originally presented by the Treasury the Department of the Treasury. It is currently presented by the United States Coast Guard through Department of Homeland Security. It's pretty, um, oh, and, and actually going further here, what's it for? It is awarded to those who rescue or attempt to rescue another person from drowning, shipwreck, or, an, uh, or other peril in the water. This is its current uh, uh, stipulations here. Uh, I couldn't find any really other other uh, bits of information on it. Um, apparently there was a silver life-saving medal as well. That was a Treasury Department award, um, but the gold one was the highest. So 
Just a uh, just a fun fact that you can't believe everything you find on the internet without verifying it. So for anyone who ever wonders what it is I actually do to to to, to write these episodes, this is what I do. I spend like an hour and a half to two hours digging up information on a person who ends up not being a Medal of Honor recipient, although I found one website that did say he received the Medal of Honor. And I guess if you don't know what you're looking at, when you read this book, it says a gold Medal of Honor. So if you read that, you just assume it is the Medal of Honor. But going on, you find life-saving medal. And uh, here I am telling you about this. And that's all I have to say about that. So let's move on to an actual Medal of Honor recipient, and we'll find out who in episode 498. William was born on the 6th of April, 1859, in Centerville, New York, and he attended the U.S. Military Academy at the age of 19. He graduated in 1882, commissioning as a second lieutenant with the 5th Infantry Regiment in Washington State, and was also a professor of military science for a year. He married Elizabeth in 1885, and the couple had two children. In both the Spanish-American and Philippine-American wars, William was the aide-de-camp to Colonel Samuel Overshine, but his actions as a captain during the Battle of Zapote River later earned him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, With nine men volunteered to hold an advanced position and held it against a terrific fire of the enemy estimated at 1,000 strong. Taking a rifle from a wounded man and cartridges from the belts of others, Captain Sage himself killed five of the enemy. William was awarded the Medal of Honor on the 24th of July, 1902, and he went on to attend the Army War College, where he graduated in 1907. He performed various assignments in the Philippines, Alaska, and New York before deploying to Texas during the Pancho Villa expedition as a lieutenant colonel. When World War I began, William was a brigadier general and was placed in command of the Officer Candidate School in Fort Snelling, Minnesota, before commanding the 38th Division at Camp Shelby, Mississippi. He deployed to Europe in command of the 2nd Brigade, American Expeditionary Forces, for a post-war occupation of France and Germany. His final duty station was as a major general in command at Fort Russell in Wyoming, when on the 3rd of June, 1922, William Hampton Sage died at the age of 63 while traveling to Walter Reed Hospital. He was one month away from retirement, and he is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 2, Lot 913. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Floru's Music. If you have any questions, you can send an email to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com, and please be sure to visit talesofhonorpodcast.com for more episodes and information. Thank you.